It is wonderful to be here at St. Cuthbert's Mill. I love this Saunders Waterford paper. As you see, I do detailed architectural paintings and the paper suits my style. It can take very thin lines as well as large washes. Uh, I like the way the paper absorbs the paint. Watercolour is a difficult medium to work with because if you make a mistake, uh, that's it, you, it's very difficult to correct it. I like watercolours because if you're painting bricks or solid stone, it can give a solid effect. While you're painting windows or shadows, they're very translucent and you can, they can be very delicate as well. That's the combination I like, that it gives solid effect to masonry walls or buildings or whatever. And uh, they can be very delicate with reflections and uh, glass or water, sky. I take lots of photographs of the building, maybe hundreds, and bring together all the details and uh, draw it in pencil first, as you can see on the painting, then slowly fill up the details with watercolour. Uh, I've used St. Cuthbert's Mill Saunders Waterford paper for many years now and always wanted to see how it's actually made and today I had the opportunity to have a look at the whole process and find it very interesting how different grades and different textures of the paper are made. It's all hand finished which was very interesting to see how the deckle edges are done and how it's cut on the other two edges. So Varsha, we're in the finishing end of St Cuthbert's Mill. Uh, this area is actually called the saw and it's where we finish off the paper to make um, it ready for artists. This is a reel that comes off the paper machine. It's called a web and it comes with two natural decal edges. The other two decal edges, make four decal edge paper, are torn by hand in a process we call splitting, which is done over here. But how does she know where to cut it? It's quite simple actually. There's a hidden line in the paper, which is down here. Oh, yes. And the paper naturally folds at that point because it's thinner and then it is cut by a blunt blade to uh, create the four deck lead sheet. Now there's um, a good pile and a bad pile as well because while the paper is being split it's also being checked for any imperfections. There could be dirt, there could be um, dents, there could be insects in it as well. <laughs> and after it's done here um, it's then embossed with a, uh, the St Cuthbert's Mill cross that you saw earlier. And you can see the St Cuthbert's cross on the right hand corner of my painting. It's all hand finished and apparently it's the cross on St Cuthbert's uh, tomb. This is where the paper is embossed in the corner with the St Cuthbert's cross and it's all done um, by hand again. Each sheet is done in the corner. I'm an architect by training, so straight elevations is a natural, they come naturally to me. Uh, when I used to study, there were no computers and everything was done by hand. And uh, that's where my interest in painting architectural watercolours came from. In fact, as you can see, I paint my buildings brick by brick to begin with. And then I can, I give a wash of yellow ochre in this painting to soften them. Uh, you see, what watercolour is my favourite medium and I think it always will be because it just somehow suits this, my style of painting with very minute details and solid brick walls and stone walls that I have to paint. And uh, 
I don't think I'll ever switch from watercolor to any other medium.